I think I felt vulnerable for the first time. I mean, personally vulnerable. I've even been in war zones. And somehow I had the sort of, even though I'm a critic of America often, I had the American ideology, which nothing was going to touch me. And all of a sudden, I'm watching this building burning um, and then crumbling a half mile away, and I realize, oh yeah, it can touch me. People who have been touched by this directly, people who saw it happen, people who lost friends or colleagues or families, have a, a, an almost visceral revulsion of the idea of more destruction and more mountains of rubble with people trapped beneath. We can't walk through the streets right now without being constantly reminded of the devastation. You come across a fire station that's lost 15 of its men, or you come across the missing posters of people who are not going to be found, or you have the horrible smell everywhere if the wind's blowing in your direction. Um, people here are very much in grief and mourning, but I think that the response from a lot of people here proves that you don't have to channel mourning and grief into jingoism and revenge. You saw those buildings explode and it said to you, oh wait, I saw them explode in Iraq too, and oh, that's what it meant. It, it didn't just mean that something was hitting a target and it, and it, and it was very beautiful. I think people are having that response. I felt so proud of the way New York reacts. Isn't this park wonderful? Where people have their memorials out for people who are dead. And they have their flags out. And they seem to find that there's nothing contradictory between that and the, and the, and the peace symbols that are all around. In fact, it's almost as if the hippie incense and peace symbols were a religious uh, sacrament to many New Yorkers who really have suffered a loss. I felt like we were colonized when the president came in and started behaving differently than the rest of us were behaving to what was our crisis. Um, a different sound came out. I thought we were terrific. I love New York. The way that the Bush administration has manipulated this event into drums of war in this illegitimate and un un inaccurate sense that all of the people of the, of the country are calling for this bloody reaction. That's what's really insensitive and manipulative. I think perhaps the most sensitive thing to do is to be sensitive to the pain not only here that we have felt, but the pain all around the world. To allow this event to penetrate our hearts and to open our hearts. What this made me feel is not only am I responsible people for people in the South because I feel bad as a privileged first worlder, this really drove home to me. I'm responsible for people in the South because they're also responsible for my well-being. You know what I mean? I mean, what this really drove home is this is the impact of 50 years of building economic structures which decimate the South. Terrorists don't need don't need bombs, terrorists don't need airplanes, terrorists don't need bridges, they don't need uh, factories, they don't need anything that you can bomb out of existence. What they need is desperation. What they need uh, is, is horrendous inequity and political violence around the world. The solution is for America to look at itself and see how we, our actions led to this strike and to realize that when you continually bomb people and they have nothing to lose, eventually they're going to strike you back. What I think we're formulating now as the beginning of a peace movement mixed with an anti-globalization movement is figuring out how we can still, even more than ever now, create another society. The, the slogan that another world is possible is not only appropriate, it is crucial. And we must make a new society so that we don't have wars. 1,750 and still counted. something in the 60s. I jumped back in and I couldn't believe what people with pink hair and nipple rings know about economics. And I don't want to see that submerge because they knew 
they had a vision of the kind of world they wanted and it wasn't anti-global, it was global in the best way. And I don't want to see that submerged even though of course we have to do whatever we can to keep this war from being a war. War is not the answer! War is not the answer! Peace! War is not the answer! War is not the answer! Peace! War is not the answer! War is not the answer! Peace! War is not the answer! War is not the answer! Peace! We can build a peace movement informed by the a globalization analysis which invokes our best virtues our virtues of cooperation our desire for love our desire for peace that doesn't come out of shame or guilt and that doesn't come out of knee-jerk fear or hate and I think that's something that we have been able to learn from the globalization struggle we've been able to learn the ways in which struggle for a better world is is deeply better for us. It makes us better people. It makes us better. It gives us better communities. Um, a better world is better for everyone.